Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I am your host Jack and this is another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Now, I'm going through my personal messages on YouTube and my comments. I often tell you if you have a question post it and then I'll try to create or um, try to do um, the task that you lay out in front of me to try to figure it out for you to make it a lot easier so you can go ahead and then recreate these uh, pictures or edits however you wish. First I want to make the uh, opening statement um, you know or my little opening segment of stop by jackstechcorner.com pick up a copy of the DVD you'll get 46 high resolution Photoshop Elements videos that you can play on your computer. I've also included software on the disk that you can use to play these videos on your Mac. So if you have a Mac I'm not leaving you out by any means. We'll pick it up. It's only fifteen dollars, and it's definitely a, a you know well worth the uh, the fifteen dollars to get these videos. They're on a DVD, and they usually ship the day after you order. So place your order today. Next, stop by and see my sponsor. If you're doing any green screen photography whatsoever, stop by uh, and see Ken's website, GreenScreenWizard.com. Ken is the uh, person that wrote the program and he also sells green screen uh, green screens so you know he can get you all set up right there on one website a couple mouse clicks <clears throat> excuse me you'll have the software as well as the green screen you need to start taking great uh, green screen photographs well let's go ahead and start with uh, this tutorial I was asked by Tom O. Hum uh, I hope that or Tom Bohum I hope I pronounce that right and he wants to put an image basically behind his text. So instead of using text and just doing a solid color, he wanted to know if you can use elements to be able to add an image inside of the text. Now he found a few tutorials online for CS2 and CS3, um, but he's not using CS2 or CS3, he's using elements and he wants to know how would you actually do that? Well, Tom Bohum, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dedicate this video to you and we'll see how you actually set that up. It's pretty simple, a few mouse clicks and, and we can set that up for you and uh, make it look really nice. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's first start this tutorial off. We're going to start in our editor. Now what we need to do first of all is to create a blank file to use for our text. So we're going to create a blank file and we are going to call this file, I don't know, um, text image. How about that? Um, the height and width you can play with and set these uh, however you wish to have those. Um, make sure it's big enough. I think the width though, and, um, we're going to make this width a little longer here. We're going to make the width about, uh, oh, let's go 2,000 pixels on the width. And we'll go ahead and open that up. All right. Now let's go view. We're going to fit this to screen so we can actually start working with this uh, this actual new layer or new file that we created. And when I create these, let me go back a step here because I want to make sure you create it the proper way. It makes it a lot nicer. Uh, uh, text image. Make sure the background contains or background contents is transparent. Remember before I showed you this, you could do white or a background color. We're going to leave it transparent so we don't have to worry about uh, trying to cut our text out later to do anything with it. All right. Now on this, we're going to go ahead and add some text here. Now when you're adding your text to these, you'll probably have the image in mind that you want to put in the background for this thing. So, you know, the text, we can actually create it to say what the picture is about. So let's go and click on text. And up here, your fonts, you want to pick out a font that's pretty big. Something that you can use that the text is going to show up behind it. So I use something bold. Uh, which one did I pick out earlier here? I actually use this uh, Salmon is the one I picked out. 
You can change your font size. I changed mine to 100. Now you'll know in the pull down menu, it won't go to 100. You see it goes to 72 and people's like, well, Jack, I was stuck. It only goes to 72. But you can actually change this size. I changed mine to 100. You can even make it a little bigger. Try 200. And then take your cursor down and draw your text box. 200 is pretty big, but we're going to see what we come up with here. Type in there whatever you'd like. It doesn't really matter the text color right now, so just go ahead and start typing. Alright, now you might have to size this to see all your text once you get it all typed. Hit the little checkbox. Then we can actually size this. We'll pull it down a little bit. Have to pull it to the right here. Well, you know what? We're going to try to actually take this text down a little bit. I'm going to edit our text here. We're going to lower this down a little bit. It's a little bit too big. I just double clicked on it. I'm going to try to lower this down a little bit. Make sure that T is not in there. There we go. Now we got it. You can see here we have basket on the top. Let's go ahead and we'll create another line of text down here. Since they are so big, we'll do two lines of text. Basketball. Okay. Just move this down a little bit. And we're going to click on the top one here. Move it down a little bit. There we go. Now the next thing we have to do here is we're going to have to actually pull our picture on top of this. So if I create another layer, I'm going to put this layer on the bottom for now. Let's create a new layer and go ahead and put our picture on there. Let's open up one of these basketball pictures I have here. And we'll grab something out of here with a lot of people in so you can see a lot of the basketball players. Open that up in the full editor. Now what we're going to do here is just select all, like we did before when we're changing backgrounds. We're just going to drag this and drop it on top of here. And we'll just minimize this one for now. Now if you're on here, we can actually resize this a little bit. We'll resize the picture down a little bit. What I'm just trying to do is get some of the basketball players. You could even, you know, move it around. Get your basketball players showing in the letters itself. There we go. I guess we got some of them in there. So that's good. We'll get started with that there. Now, once you have this set up, <clears throat> what we have to do is take the picture that we put on that new layer, we're going to pull it to the top. Well, first we'll click our checkbox here. You know, even I forget things occasionally. Pull that to the top. Now, if we click these, I think this should work. Let's try Control G. No, that's not going to work. What we'll do on this one first is we'll do a control G here. We'll link it to the bottom one. Then we'll do the top one and we'll do a control G. And it'll link it to that. All right, hold off here a minute. Okay, the first thing we want to do here is since we have two different layers with the text on them, you can see one there and one there. We're going to take these, click on the first one, hold your control key down, click on the second one. Now if you go under the pull down menu for layer, 
we're going to go to merge layers. What we did now was put both of the text onto that one layer. So we're only working with one layer. Now, click on this picture that you have. Make sure it's turned on. There's the picture. Do a control G. You're going to group that now with the text. You can see now that we actually have the basketball players in the word basketball. And again, you can still move this around. If you just hold on your screen, as long as that layer is selected, you can move it around, adjust it to maybe have different people's heads in you know the different places. Uh, we'll just pull it up here a little bit. Just so you can see a couple of them. Just to give it the effect that you want. Now once you have that done, I thought, you know, we can go one step further with this, actually. We're going to go and we're going to create another layer. Just create a new blank layer and pull that down to the bottom. Because as you can see, we still got a transparency there that we have to deal with. So let's go ahead and put a color in there. And I thought you could use a solid color if you wish. You could just pick out a color somewhere, grab a color. And you can use your paint bucket tool and you can drop it in there. You could do that. Or, you know, I always like to use the gradients. Click on the gradient tool. That's the gradient I picked earlier was the blue and yellow. And you could just draw that in there however you wish. Just to have it a little, it just sets it off a little bit. So that sets it off really nicely. You can still take this text and you can add a bevel to it. Put a little bevel on your text to kind of, you know, spruce it up a little bit. Make it look more interesting. We can double click on the effects layer then. We can still add our drop shadows if we wish. You can add a little drop shadow on there. You can add a glow if you want to glow on it. Add outer glow. Maybe you want a little bit of outer glow on it. You don't want to take away too much from the effect itself. Or you can also do strokes if you want to put a, a color around the outside of the letters. You can also take and increase that bevel size a little bit if you wish. Just to bring it up off your page a little bit. And there you go. Once you have that completed, just click on File, Save As. Now if you're going to print these, remember folks, don't save them as a PSD file. Go down and save it as a JPEG file. And put that wherever you wish that to be. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on how to use an image and, and put that inside of your text. It's a pretty neat little trick. I thought you would like it. Um, thank you very much for the question. I do appreciate that. If you have any other questions, please drop those over at jackstechcorner at gmail.com or post it in the comments. Or you can drop me a personal message on YouTube. There's a lot of different ways to get a hold of me, folks. Once again, I'm your host, Jack. And if you're not subscribed to these videos, please go over to my channel and subscribe today. Until next time, keep those shutters clicking, keep the editors editing. I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.